Hello, my name is uh, Kevin Young from Moonlight Mantids, and uh, today I'm going to do a care video for you guys special with one of my favorite mantids, the uh, Griffin Mantis, which is Polyspelota Griffini. And um, we're just going to do a little bit of basic care information, um, maybe a few tips on breeding, although this is one of the um, easier species to breed and raise, minus their large size, which is really cool because it kind of rivals the Chinese. Except for they're ten times more beautiful, and I think they get just a little bit bigger. Um, maybe not exactly quite as long, but uh, pretty close. Um, uh, griffin mantids or polysplodids are usually from West Africa, like Cameroon and areas like that. Uh, they're really variable in color. Sometimes you get like blue ones, you get some red ones in there, and um, sometimes they end up in like this grayish marbly color, which is kind of cool. Which is also a cousin of theirs. It's called the Madagascarian uh, marbled. Uh, mantis, which is also just a polyspelota. It's like a griffin. Um, they're pretty similar. Um, that one is uh, A. ruginosa, which um, there's polyspelota griffini, and then A. ruginosa, which I, I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. Um, anyway, they can lay up to like six ooth, which I'm going to show you an ooth. Um, they uh, hatch in about five to six weeks, and they can hatch up to 200, especially the first few ooth, especially for keeping up on breeding. That means like breeding them right after they lay some eggs. Um, Maybe after two or three ooth, you try to throw another male in if you got it, and uh, try to um, you bring, keep your fertility up, and you, these guys will make a lot of babies. Uh, they're fairly hardy. Um, the ones that I've bred and been selling are uh, third generation now, which is really, really good, and I've had some help from some other breeders um, that, have, uh, that um, have done a really good job with them over this past year, and actually, to tell you the truth, this is the first time anyone's come forward and said, hey, I, I made babies of, the year, of your mantids, and they were the griffins, which was really awesome, because not just one, but several people managed to breed them. So now they're they're pretty common, whereas to about a year ago, I think, pretty sure I was the only one, or two, a year, two years ago, they were kind of hard to find. So some species come and go, and they become like super, super hard to find, and there's just, ah, just thousands, you know, and they're everywhere, and everybody's got a whole bunch of them, and then the next year you might not find any. Well, this happened with the griffin a lot. Well, this year is a really strong year for the griffins, but please keep breeding them, keep them, keep them in uh, in our trade, and then keep doing a good job with them. A um, little more info on them. Let's see. Uh, no real special care, except for you might want to use like a bigger caging once they become subs, just so they have an easier time shedding. 32 ounces is not good for an adult. Um, maybe a male, you know, but that's pushing it a little bit. So you want these big, big deli cups that you can get. Otherwise, a nice jar, you know, like a big giant jar. Uh, it doesn't matter, plastic or glass. They're pretty good climbers. Um, make sure you put some mesh material, make sure you, they have a good shed service, surface, and you just, um, you put them in something bigger, especially your females, so they can shed good, because you're going to do all that work, you're going to get all your males, your females, and then they're going to shed, and because of how long they are, they're about five inches, uh, um, the males can get about four and a half, females about five, five and a half inches, which is really cool, um, and I'm going to show you a couple color differences here, some subs and even some babies from a friend of mine who sent me some, which is really nice, I mean, some people are in it just to, to, to breed a few and then uh, some people actually manage to sell. Selling is a huge pain. It's hard to ship insects so I do have a few people that, that send me some stuff and they keep enough for themselves and they do a little bit of breeding which is kind of cool and you can you know that, that's really nice that people do that and it keeps the bloodlines going and it, 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 make, it helps out you know and we've talked a little bit about inbreeding and stuff and uh, you know sometimes you're, you're not always in it to raise a thousand nymphs you know you just want a couple, you know, give the rest away, you don't have to, don't throw them outside, but uh, you can freeze them and all that other stuff. And, um, so, um, you know, oh, hold on a second. Oh, 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 uh, they actually have a status. They're not endangered at all. And the interesting thing I found out about them is they do really well under degradation, um, which means that, um, you know, like uh, people, um, you know, housing, you know, living next to people and where, where things are being, you know, destroyed and stuff, the griffins are actually pretty um pretty good at like living next to the industrial type areas and stuff so it means like 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 here with our um with our carolinas and our, our chinese and stuff which we aren't really like chinese but um they do really well living around people so they do well under degradation not endangered at all um at least not the graffini um but the polyspelotids are survivors um uh, let's see my personal experience with them is um i happened to uh or I, I worked with them um a few years before and this was before i managed to breed any and uh what happened the last time is I had two males and one female, and uh, this was when I first got into mass. This was a while ago, actually, and um, I think I mentioned this before, but this was the one species that I did find that um, I found the males decapitated, holding their own heads. So for whatever reason, they kind of came up and they sort of, um, sort of did the stretch. I watched one of them do it, and it was the craziest thing ever. And I think I mentioned it, but kind of did the stretch, came back down, and, and just kind of 
caught its own head and got just 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 cut it off. And that happened with the griffins. Those are the, um, those are the only mantids that I've seen that have done that. Um, that's just my experience with them. But um, overall, one of my top favorites. I always make sure I, I try to do my best with the griffins each year, so they're available. I'm glad to finally finally see someone, so other people, other breeders. Um, and hobbyists starting to work with them more and more and um, doing a really good job with them period so I want to I want to want to encourage you guys to to keep working with them. I hope this video helps a little bit just a little bit of basic information um, larger caging as sub adults um, just anything they can catch you're gonna move up into some uh, bigger roaches and stuff so um, even adult dubias for some of the females so be prepared for that just because of their large size um, once they get into adults, but uh, they start out pretty small, and I'll show you some nymphs and stuff real quick. All right, one second. Let's see here. Oh. Hold on a second. All right. Let's see here. Um, here we have, and I'll show you real quick. Try to get a good, good picture of it. This is an adult male, and you can see it's it is quite large. Um, some good coloring on that one. Um, they uh, they tend to get quite a bit larger. Um, the females do, especially a lot thicker. And I have two sub females here, which I'll show you really quick. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Bad angles. This is a sub female, which you can see is already the size of the male. A little more robust. This one's alive. Um, the males. Uh, this came from another ooth, and uh, like I said before, that the the males mature quite a bit earlier, and uh, so not always. You don't always breed all your males to your females because your females take a little bit longer. They got a few more sheds. Well, this is a nice brown one. See, that's a good picture. Actually, that's pretty. I'm pretty happy with that. And then, um, let's see here. Really nice. Uh oh, be careful. Really nice, colorful one. This one's really beautiful, actually. You could, these are like one of the best mantids to take pictures of. Um, they just have so many different colors on them, and they they vary so much within one ooth. You'll you'll see you'll guaranteed see like every color, like some reds deep reds, greens, and blues, um, to nice like sort of browns and then kind of mixes of all those. So that's a real nice one. Nice blue eyes or purpley eyes. Um, also a sub female, which you can see how big she is. There's your, there's your difference there. <sighs> and then um, I'll show you what an ooth looks like real quick. Um, that's a pretty decent sized ooth. As you can see a 32 ounce uh, cloth lid. Um, Right here, and uh, actually, this is—I think it's probably like the sixth from the female that laid it, um, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, they can lay a lot of ooth, so it's—they're uh, um, pretty prolific, and you're gonna have a lot of luck with these. So uh, get your hands on about a dozen or two, and you'll—you'll uh, you'll guaranteed be able to breed these. It's—it's it's no trouble at all, and I'll have to do a breeding video to show you guys a little bit more about it. Um, let me show you some nymphs here. These are L1 nymphs that just hatched. Um, these are actually. Um, they're actually, they, they have a little bit less of a die-off, I've noticed, as I've bred them. Um, but I've been doing a pretty good job uh, keeping their bloodlines pretty clean. Um, th these actually came in from a friend who, uh, like I said earlier, sent me in some, uh, some extras, which was really cool of him. Um, so now we, we, you know, we have several different, uh, you know, age groups and generations. So it, it helps you keep, like, a ready supply of them um, if you get into more... Uh, commercial use of these guys and distribution or whatever which is you know it's it's not everybody's bag it's a lot of work but um there's tiny little oh wow that's a good picture so I probably talked enough about them um, and uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video and um, I hope you guys uh, get some griffins of your own um, there's a lot of sources for them nowadays so um, you guys uh, also make sure you subscribe to our page and uh, like our Facebook um, and uh, also we have a Vine uh, channel, which is like Moonlight Mantids, which you guys can look up, which is pretty cool. Um, you just kind of see some more like some of the stuff we do in the shop and some of it's kind of like ridiculous or whatever. And kind of Sam kind of does that stuff. So if you just want to like see some of that stuff, um, I think it's pretty neat. Um, also, you might have noticed uh, we did discover a brand new species, uh, a mantis from uh, KFC. That's just a gag. Anyway, yeah, you guys have a good night. Bye.